Welcome to ETAP Digital Innovations Conference. My name is Mohammed Zadeh. I'm from ETAP. And today I'm going to talk about microgrid control with 100% renewable power supply that is implemented in Red Sea Project. Where the Red Sea Project is located, it is on the west coast of Saudi Arabia in the Red Sea. This is a 33,000 kilometer square of islands, lagoon, coastal plains, and mountains, which basically is going to be a vacation resort that are fully supplied by renewable energy resources. In terms of the electric grid, Red Sea microgrids or Red Sea utility includes three off-grid microgrids, as you see one here on the top, one on the right-hand side here, and one in this island. So each of these microgrids, which are uh, permanently islanded, disconnected from anywhere else, they are supplied by two solar PVs, including uh, about five megawatt generations, two battery energy storage, uh, capable of charging and discharging five megawatts total, and about 18 megawatt hour charging capacity. These microgrids also have two internal combustion engines, which are conventional generators, uh, about 3.8 megawatt. However, these generators most of the times are off and they're just used as a backup in case there's not enough uh, solar power or there's some failure in the system. There's also a main grid that connects uh, five stations uh, in a ring configurations. Uh, this includes four PVs that equals 324 megawatt six batteries, total 225 megawatt charge and discharging capacity with 1.25 gigawatt hour storage capacity, around 25,000 EVs, six internal combustion engine plants, total about 102.5 megawatt. It has 10 statcom providing 110 megawatt and one reactor about 80 megawatt. In this presentation, we're not gonna talk about the main grid, uh, which is really fascinating and interesting, that is also supplied all by renewables in a normal operation. Our focus in this presentation is going to be more on these uh, permanently remote islanded systems. Uh, in Red Sea microgrid, uh, the idea is that they have designed the system to have solar generation uh, considerably more than the loads in the system. So in a typical sunny day, the solar power not only supplies the load, but also charges the battery. And once the sun sets and there is not enough sun to supply the load, then the battery starts actually discharging and providing power to the loads. Now, in case that there is a cloudy day or there's not enough sun or there's some failure in our systems, then there are two uh, internal combustion engines that can be utilized to supply the load. Again, the system is designed for be able to be sustainable based on the renewable technology for more than 98% of the times. Uh, on top of that, the system should tolerate N1-1 contingency. So if one of the solar trips or the batteries are actually two internal batteries, if one of them trips or if one of the ice machines trips, the system should be able to sustain and provide power to the, to the load. Now, which is 1.8 megawatt in this case. ETAB microgrid controller uh, is used to uh, orchestrate, coordinate, manage, and control assets, the DERs and the load in the system. Now, we're going to go and deep dive into this microgrid and see how, how it works and what is the challenge and how ETAB microgrid control system address the challenge. Now, in a typical operation, uh, in a very sunny day, when we look at the basically the profile of the load and generation, what you see here is that as the sun rises uh, and the PV power supply goes up, uh, we start charging the battery and supplying the load. As you see here in this scenario, actually at 12 o'clock, we realize that the battery actually is getting full. So the mockery controller is going to command the solar generation to curtail. And for the rest of the day, what's happening is that the mockery controller makes sure that 
the amount of power generation in PV is very close to what we have in the battery. Certain reserve margin is maintained uh, in the battery by ETA microcontroller controller for this operation. Now, as the sun goes down, uh, the basically the microcontroller controller is going to command the to uncurtail to command the battery to pick up and supply the the load. And as you see, that's how the system behaves. The battery starts basically charging here, and then there's no charge, and then there would be a discharge. Now you may say that probably this system is over designed or uh, we for most of the times they are curtailing, but keep in mind that this is a, uh, the case that the PV generation is maximum. Uh, in the cases that are clouds, in certain days of the winter where there's enough not sun, uh, the system should be able still to sustain and uh, maintain the entire load of the system. So that's why you see that in this case, which is a summer day, you have a little bit seems over design, but in reality is that if you look at a winter day, if you look at some cloudy days, the goal is that to use the renewables as much as possible. Now, also, this is the load for the next few years, and in future, the load can grow, and they designed a system to, to sustain the system for the future load as well. When we look at these micro grids that are really heavy on solar generation, as you see here that the amount of solar generation in many hours a day is actually more than how much gets charged by the battery because the solar is actually providing a load as well as it's charging a battery. So in these macro grids, uh, in order to have a proper load frequency control, there should be some sort of a coordination and collaboration between your the PV generation as well as the battery. First of all, the battery uh, in the typical operation is the main asset, so it runs in the grid forming supporting. It means it has droop functionality, uh, like typical generator governor, as well as it has a virtual inertia to make sure that it makes the system stable. The second thing is that our solar generation is a grid falling supporting. However, it has due functionality so that during the frequency, actually when the frequency uh, increases, it quickly curtails to support during the frequency increase. During the frequency drop, it these battery and these battery controllers has also a capacity to maintain for reserve margin. So if it gets enabled, it can allow that actually the battery to, uh, sorry, the solar to always maintain certain amount of curtailment. So upon frequency drop, they can immediately respond and increase the generation. This feature is important. At this point, it's disabled by default to take benefit of the full uh, renewable generations. But in case it's needed and they need more supports during the frequency drop, it can be in, it can be enabled. You, you see that in ETAP, the primary controllers allows to actually provide both the droop functionality uh, as well as the positive reserve margin. Uh, also a virtual inertia. Let's quickly look at the ETAP, uh, these features. So this is a kind of a simplistic version of the model. As you see here in the in, in our PV model controller, we provide again the various functions, the active power control, reactive power control, and other stuff. And you see that in the active power control, we have a droop functionality, and user can enable, disable, determine the dead band droop and positive reserve margin. On top of that, on the uh, battery side, user can also define the uh, grid forming capability if it's needed. Virtual inertia, virtual impedance are all available and can be used by the user. Now, uh, for generator, they have droop and real inertia. And then there's an ETAB mockery controller. Now, in this system, again, due to the collaborative control of the PV and battery, none of them are doing the ultimate frequency control or isochronous control. Both of them are droop, so if there is a load variation, if there's a generation variation, the frequency always will uh, fall into the off-nominal frequency because both of them are droop. Now, in order to maintain, bring the frequency back to nominal, uh, ETA provides a secondary frequency control. And if battery would be isochronous, any event happens, ultimately all the share will be applied to the battery and there will be more pressure on the battery. And the battery should have been sized much larger. In order to avoid that, 
there is no actually a synchronous control and the ETA microwave controller provides a secondary frequency control by looking at the frequency of the system, looking at a battery and solar, and dispatching them in such a way to bring the frequency back to the uh, nominal frequency. The same thing in the voltage control. In the voltage control, all the battery, solar, and generator, if in case comes to the system, needs to collaboratively uh, control and share reactive power support. So all of them, they have the QV droop, and this basically ensures that if there's a voltage goes up and down, each asset shares certain amount of reactive power to the system. There is also the transformer load tap changer, but at the end of the day, to maintain the bus voltage at a certain level, there is a secondary voltage control that exists in the ETAP microgrid controller. Again, quickly take a look at this uh, secondary frequency control and voltage control. Let's look at just a battery very quickly here. The battery primary controller under the Q, uh, it can have basically the QV control under the uh, Q control. It can have the droop functionality. So user can define a droop and use that. In our microgrid controller, we have a reactive power control that we do the voltage control so user can define the uh, P gain, internal gain, the ramp rate, and also the dispatch priority, which in this system, PV is priority one and battery is priority two. So when it comes to any disturbance that results into the voltage change, first battery, both battery and ESS reacts dynamically, but then microwave controller is going to go ahead and use the PV as much as possible and unloads the battery to make sure that battery is used mostly for active power control, unless the PV does not have a capability to do that. One of the key aspects of uh, doing uh, the this type of microgrids that are supported, supplied by renewable energy resources and battery is Black Start. In this microgrid, they're using something called soft energization, which is kind of new and is trying to avoid inrush currents of the transformers or cables in the system. Now, the way that this works is uh, there are two cases. Let's focus on case one, then we'll look at the case two. In case one, basically there's a pre-energization step. What does that mean is that when the system is black and we are trying to do a black start, first we close all transformers from the HV side to make sure that transformers are closed from the HV side. And then we make sure that all the loads and DERs are open. Then we start doing soft energizations of the battery. It means that we're gonna ramp up the battery voltage slowly up. And once we ramp up the voltage, uh, we uh, bring up the voltage slowly to avoid any inrush current. And then we pick up some load or auxiliary load, and then we uh, ramp up the renewables. Uh, here in this figure, you see that in this small piece here, we have basically the, uh, the black start here, a small ramp up of the voltage, and then this is the ramp up of the uh, active power. Uh, but for now, let's focus on the case two quickly to have a contrast here. In case two, the idea is that uh, it's very similar in terms of pre-energization. We close all the transformer HV side to avoid inrush. We open loads and DRs, but this time we are soft energizing the generators. So basically we say that the batteries, if they do not have enough charge, they cannot perform well in the grid forming mode. So what happens is that we soft energize both generators and then we energize the auxiliary loads and then we pick up some loads and then the remaining we're going to charge the batteries once battery reach to 10 percent then we're going to ramp up the renewables and in this system we are ramping up the renewables 20 percent per minute so let's quickly look at one case here that i have for the case one uh, as you see that we are in the black condition and then we are ramping up the voltage in five seconds at this point we don't know exactly uh, how much does it take to ramp up? But uh, this is settable in terms of the primary controllers for the batteries or generator to ramp up slowly to volt uh, of the voltage. Once voltage ramps up here, this we're calling it soft energization. Then we are going to add some loads. We add some loads. Once we add some loads or auxiliary loads, and then here you see that the frequency actually drops. Once we add the load, frequency drops, but because there's a droop, assets are going to go ahead and contribute to the frequency drop. Keep in mind, in this system, at this point, only battery is going to contribute 
because frequency drops. But when frequency increases, both battery and PV can contribute. Then there is also a microgrid controller secondary frequency control. That is, since the frequency is off, so it's going to command the, basically the battery uh, to provide more power and bring up back the frequency. And then once at this stage, uh, we do the ramp up of the renewables. And as we are ramping up the renewables, which is supposed to take about five uh, minutes because it's 20% per minute, it's so ramping up the renewable about a few minutes. And as we ramp up the renewables, because the PV has that, now this time what happens here is that they have a droop and the battery starts to drop. As battery starts to drop, uh, and starts charging, the mockery controller also does a secondary frequency control. It does not allow the frequency to go up significantly. As the frequency goes up every five seconds, it's going to go ahead and adjust the set points to make sure that frequency comes back to the nominal case. And you see also the sequence of operation here. So one of the beauties of using ETAP is that now that we have the complete digital twin of the system, not only we can set this microgrid controller black star set points in ETAP, but also we can see the full interaction of the microgrid controller black star function, let's say in this case, and the primary controllers that do that. Let's quickly look at here. So we have the black start function, we have the soft energization scheme two, we have pre-energization, soft energization, auxiliary load energization, load energization, energy storage energization if we start with the generator as a first step, and then the renewable ramp ups. So user can set everything here. And then uh, in the batteries, let's say, we have settings to say that this battery is actually capable of doing the black uh, uh, black soft energization. So you have a settings for soft energization. Now we go through the entire process. When we run the simulations, we force the system go to the black. And once the system goes to the black, you see that all these circuit breakers are tripped. Now the mockery controller commands to close these circuit breakers as part of pre-energizations. Once this circuit breaker closed, microgrid controller is going to command the batteries to start and do the soft energization. As you see that voltage starts ramping up here, voltage starts ramping up, okay? Now let me do fast forward. Voltage reaches to 100%. Now, once voltage reaches to 100%, we start bringing our loads, okay? The auxiliary load, I think, is uh, added. Uh, it was not in the previous step. Now it's added. Next step, we're going to bring the other load. We're going to load the system. And then we start connecting our renewables. You see that in this step, actually, my renewable got connected. And then we start increasing, ramping up the renewable. So the renewable is going to ramp up now all the way to the end. Okay. So the entire process of the black star can be monitored in ETAB and visualized. Uh, and this is a great deal when it comes to this type of project. Now, with this, let me just summarize my presentation. Off-grid microgrids that are supplied by renewables and also typically they have battery are very sophisticated. Being able to do simulation and having a digital twin of the entire microgrid is essential to doing the design, selecting a controller scheme, and setting the optimal control settings. It's really important for such microgrids to validate the entire microgrid control system, both primary and secondary, and even tertiary systems. And by doing that, it minimizes the amount of HIL chess and field surprises or, or, or failures. It minimizes the HIL test and field surprises. It seem, uh, the technology that we use at ETAB with all these digital twin also simplifies and accelerates the logic development process. Now, one of the key aspects of microgrids with battery and renewables is to have a secondary voltage and frequency controls that we provide as part of ETAB microgrid controller. Also, soft energization is the key to be able to uh, black start the microgrid and avoid inrush currents. Typical renewables cannot tolerate or battery cannot tolerate six, seven per unit inrush currents that's needed by transformer. So be able to handle the soft energization by primary controllers and a microgrid controller to orchestrate and coordinate that is very important for, for success of such projects. With that, I'm done with my presentations and I'm more than happy to answer any questions. Thank you.